Hi everyone, my name is Ellen and I'm the Programs Coordinator for Arthritis Consumer Experts. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Alice Mai. Is it Alice Mai? Yes, that's right. Amazing. Dr. Alice Mai, who's a rheumatologist in Vancouver and the new director of the Sjogren's Clinic at Mary Pack Arthritis Center. She completed her medical training and residency training in adult rheumatology at the University of British Columbia and then went on to complete additional training in the management of Sjogren's syndrome at the University of Toronto. Some other interests include systemic sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, and vasculitis. Dr. Mai is also involved in teaching as a clinical instructor with the University of British Columbia Division of Rheumatology. So many hats that you wear. Very honored to have you here, Dr. Alice Mai. Oh, thank you so much, Ellen. I'm happy to be here. And um, with that, we're going to jump into a few questions, if you don't mind. Of course. Amazing. So the first thing, can you share with our members how you're involved in rheumatology and how did you kind of get on the path towards specializing in Sjogren's? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as you said, I, um, I did my rheumatology training uh, in Vancouver after my residency in internal medicine, also in Vancouver. Um, I first became interested in rheumatology when I was a, a resident in internal medicine. Um, and I think what drew me to it is that uh, um, most rheumatologic diseases are very um, uh, kind of very systemic. They involve multiple parts of the body. Um, so you really have to look at the whole picture. Um, also, it's a really exciting time for rheumatology. There's a lot of new therapeutics, like the biologic agents that have come out in the past 10 to 20 years. And so um, I think it's just an exciting special to, to be in right now with the, the cusp of so many innovations. So those are the main things that uh, drew me to rheumatology. Um, and then, sorry, was the second part of that question, what brought me to Sjogren's? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So I... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, as I was doing my training in rheumatology in BC, um, I did notice that there wasn't a Sjogren's clinic here in BC yet. And there's a lot of other uh, rheumatology subspecialty clinics like vasculitis, uh, lupus, uh, pregnancy clinic, um, etc. And so uh, it felt like this was a, a need uh, um, that was here in this province. And um, I did notice also that, uh, you know, Sjogren's often um, uh, was, uh, you know, either um, uh, oftentimes could be underdiagnosed or underrecognized um, and often people weren't as um, uh, we weren't as strict at following the, the classification criteria and therefore we're probably missing cases or maybe um, uh, people were labeled with Sjogren's that didn't have Sjogren's and so uh, that's what uh, um, caught my interest in my residency training and uh, because of that I uh, um, I went to Toronto and did a bit of extra training with Dr. Arthur Bookman who runs the Sjogren's clinic there and he's uh, one of the leading Sjogren's uh, experts in Canada and so um, after I did that training with him, I decided to come back here and open a, a similar clinic that was a multidisciplinary um, in BC. Well, we are so lucky to have you here. Oh, and, thank you. You know, with somebody who lives with Sjogren's, I am so grateful to, you know, be in the presence of someone who finds it really interesting and recognizes that I feel it gets less attention than some of the yeah. other conditions. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of that is because, um, well, the the kind of the presenting complaints of Sjogren's are, are very common, like amongst people that don't have Sjogren's. So things like dry eyes and dry mouths. So I think a lot of those symptoms might get brushed off. Um, also compared to some of the other um, rheumatologic illnesses, a lot of Sjogren's, you know, it can be just mild, like sick of symptoms like that, just the dryness. Um, and so um, uh, it's uh, it's rare, but you, uh, you don't see as much like kind of like really severe disease with Sjogren's. And so maybe it's not as exciting as some of the other rheumatologic conditions, but certainly still very debilitating and a chronic illness that needs attention. Um, and then the last reason might be just there's there's not a lot of therapeutics in Sjogren's right now, which is um obviously disappointing but again like other conditions in the last 10 years in rheumatologies I think we're in the cusp of something where um, there's a lot of new research being going on and I think around the corner there's going to be a lot more uh, treatment and uh, um, a lot more optimistic landscape for Sjogren's. Absolutely like what a great time to be in this field right now and just yeah. for, even for myself just adjacent to it and learning about it very very ecstatic. Yeah um, and with that can you explain kind of the two types of Sjogren's for perhaps our audience who may not uh, know of the two types? 
For sure. Yeah, yeah. So there's primary Sjogren's and then there's secondary Sjogren's. So uh, primary Sjogren's basically um, means that you have Sjogren's syndrome that's not uh, uh, associated with another rheumatologic condition. Um, and so like I, I was saying before, the the, the, the kind of the cornerstone um, symptoms are the dry eyes and the dry mouth, but you can have a lot of other systemic manifestations as well. Um, versus secondary Sjogren's is often the uh, uh, dry eyes and dry mouth, but associated associated with another established uh, rheumatologic diagnosis. So the most common ones that are associated with secondary Sjogren's are rheumatoid arthritis, uh, systemic sclerosis or scleroderma, um, and uh, lupus is another one that can uh, uh, give you secondary Sjogren's. Thank you for that explanation. So, so clear. Yeah, no problem. And um, from your perspective, uh, Dr. Mai, do you think it's necessary to see a condition-specific specialist, like a specialist of a specialist? For sure, um, yeah, yeah. You know, if you uh, do have um, perhaps particular questions. Yes, that's a great question. I think that, um, you know, for certain conditions, like for example, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, um, things like that, that are uh, much more common. Um, and um, we see a lot in general rheumatology. Um, you know, there's probably less of a need for uh, subspecialty clinics, although in like big academic centers, for example, like Toronto, um, there's a lot of subspecialties, even within specialties like rheumatology. Um, you know, I, I do think it's important to have these subspecialty clinics just because for for rarer conditions like vasculitis, uh, lupus, Sjogren's, um, you know, as a general rheumatologist, you may not see that many cases of it, like maybe a handful of cases um, over a year. And so um, you may not be up to date on all of the um, the diagnostics or the treatment. So it's, um, you know, obviously it's not mandatory. I think most general rheumatologists are uh, trained to, um, you know, manage Sjogren's well, but I think to for that extra, you know, confirmation of the diagnosis, the extra, um, uh, just make Making sure that you're um, on all the correct treatments and up to date. I think it's nice to have that um, subspecialist that's um, who has an area of focus, um, especially for Sjogren's. Like I think the thing that uh, was really lacking is that even when I was doing my training, like um, uh, most of the rheumatologists I worked with didn't do all of the uh, the required tests to kind of confirm the diagnosis. So I think a lot of this diagnosis was getting thrown around, um, and it wasn't as strict uh, with with kind of the classification criteria, which I think is important because um, distinct distinguishing Sjogren's from just other dryness is important because there's things associated with Sjogren's that you need to monitor for like lymphoma risk and things like that that you wouldn't have to worry about um, if you just had dry eyes dry mouth for other reasons so um, yeah for those reasons I think it's uh, it's an important niche um, uh, this clinic is going to fill um, but certainly like if you live in rural BC or a place that's difficult to travel at here and you're able to only see a general rheumatologist I think you would get perfectly adequate care I think this is just an additional kind of reassurance. Absolutely. And like you said, the, the smaller nuances that may not be, you know, known or present or may manifest in different ways. Exactly. Um, I think, you know, that's the part that's interesting, but uh, to, to, to manage and uh, yeah. Yeah. for yourself, I think. You know, the other thing is, I think, as uh, with these special clinics, I think most of us um, do do a component of research. So, you know, for things like um, uh, clinical trials that we can get involved in, um, um, that's uh, that's an important part of them is that, uh, you know, by seeing a doctor at one of these clinics, uh, you can participate in that and, um, you know, be part of like um, trial medications that you may not have access to if you just saw a general rheumatologist. Love that. I, <laughs> I vouch for research. Yes. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. Adam. Right there. All right. Um, out of curiosity, I know you mentioned the clinic in Toronto that is a subspecialty clinic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there, do you know if there's others in Canada, North America? Yeah, yeah. So in North America, definitely. Like there's big centers uh, for Sjogren's like in San Francisco, um, in Baltimore. Um, uh, but in Canada, I'm actually not aware of any others other than in Toronto um, and Dr. Bookman's clinic. Um, I th that's the only other big one that I know of, but there may be others that are starting up. I, I don't know. We, we hope we hope there are them. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, will you kindly tell us a little bit more about this clinic that is opening up in Vancouver? Um, does it require a referral? How, yeah. you know, how can we get getting in on it? 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So this is brand new. So um, I just started it up in uh, this this last March. So it's only been running for a few months. So uh, basically how this started was we um, uh, we got together a bunch of specialists that were interested in Sjogren's because, as you know, Sjogren's is a it's kind of a multidisciplinary condition in that you need a ophthalmologist, you know, oral medicine specialist, pathologists that all have expertise in this because each of those areas is important in the, the diagnosis and the management of, of Sjogren's. So we've um, we've got a, a good group of uh, interested uh, specialists and how it works is that um, I receive the referrals to the Sjogren's clinic and I, I see um, uh, patients at the clinic and then uh, depending on uh, kind of the investigations they've had done already and their symptoms, I refer them on to the other uh, doctors in the network. So the ophthalmologist, um, the ENT surgeon who does uh, biopsies for Sjogren's and then uh, the pathologist who does all our readings of the, the biopsies. And then at the end of that, we basically um, provide like a, a, a conf confirmation of the diagnosis or ruling out of the diagnosis, as well as uh, kind of extensive guidelines as to how to manage this condition. And then if they have kind of more serious um, symptoms of Sjogren's that might need um, systemic uh, immunosuppressive therapies, and I usually tend to um, see these patients on an ongoing basis, at least every uh, year at the clinic, in addition to their um, general rheumatologist who manages them. Um, right now, uh, because the clinic is only running once a month to start off with. Um, we're only accepting referrals from other rheumatologists or other specialists, um, just because once we open it up to general practitioners and others, it, may, it just might get overwhelming with the volume. But depending on how the first few months go, um, that might be the direction that we head in um, in the future. Um, so as a patient right now, um, uh, to get into the Sjogren's clinic, uh, I, I think the first step would be to actually see a rheumatologist or I guess an ophthalmologist or oral medicine specialist as the first line. And then if they think that um, the suspicion of Sjogren's is there, then they'll refer to me um, at the clinic. What a comprehensive clinic that really like captures it all. That is, you know, so exciting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We will definitely kind of repeat that kind of at the bottom of the video saying, if you do want a referral, then please go to your rheumatologist, uh, speak to your rheumatologist for that. Okay. Yeah. It's fantastic. And uh, Dr. Alice Mai, we want to thank you for your expertise, for your time, and for, you know, sharing with us your story and uh, really the trajectory of, of this clinic. Thank you so much, Ellen. I really appreciate this opportunity. And with that, um, we want to thank the audience for tuning in at uh, Arthritis at Home, and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. You.